When we've been discussing aspects of neurobiology, we sometimes uh, seem to provoke a few people who are afraid of various sciences. But it's at a point now where it can really be quite dangerous not to know what's going on in neuroscience, at least to have some idea. The new neuroscience of war, for example, has huge ramifications for the rest of civilization outside of war zones. Uh, it's nothing that is developed for the purpose of war ever stays there. Synthetic rubber, for example, um, various kinds of ersatz coffee and other things that were developed during war years, during times of rationing. Military developments very often spill over into the civil, civil world. The Jeep was a prime example. Uh, and this uh, new neuroscience of war and the ramifications of it are something we'll have to talk about from time to time. In the 1970s, when um, barcodes began to be used for other people besides railways and trucking companies, they were developed in the late 1950s for railways for tracking boxcars originally, and uh, very crude, crude barcode readers. But in the 1970s, some Pentecostal journals began to write that barcodes constituted the mark of the beast. At the same time that the um, Pentecostal preachers began preaching and a few Pentecostal journals wrote that UFOs were actually demonic apparitions. Now some writers, having read these Pentecostal journals, brought these ideas into the Orthodox Church, where in some cases they caused a great deal of mischief. But uh, one of uh, four debates I have, only one of which are still famous, was about barcodes and insisting that we should not be apocalyptic about barcodes, that uh, barcodes were something rather passive. At the time we were already aware of the development of microchips. They were still a bit crude, but in any case they were developing and the uh, basic computer was being was sort of morphing out of the old analog computers. And uh, at the time, when people were primarily Pentecostal and one or two Orthodox writers who borrowed from the Pentecostals were saying that barcodes were some kind of mark of the beast or something, um, even then microchips, the impact in neurobiology, neuro, neuroscience, were quite minimal. And I don't think any of us could have guessed the extent of it. But in modern neuroscience, which is in the sphere of the military, and certainly will be present in in civil sphere in very short order, because we have such a capacity for brain scans, even following the signals in the brain, being able to tell basically what people are thinking about. One reason, for example, we know that homosexuality is something people are born with rather than um, something they choose is because the brain scans are so extremely good now that we can follow the uh, neural circuitry of the whole matter. When it was rather discovered that one could use the mind brain signals to move uh, prosthetic arms or hands. You could think and move these things. It also occurred to some people that you could use this in the military. And there developed a whole process at unfolding fairly rapidly now of being able to control missiles and other weapons with the brain itself. Of course you have devices that transmit the signals from the brain. And one can scan the brains of various people and see which ones would be the most adept at using these means. 
Now the fact that one can scan the brain and, and find out all these things, including the general thought process, not just the general thought processes, but what essentially a person is thinking about. Not yet in fine detail, but in, in, in a, a less than general sense already. Determining which people will have the capacity to operate various weapons with, the, uh, with brain signals. Now this sounds like Star Trek, but a lot of the things in Star Trek, of course, have come to pass. Um, remember when Dick Tracy had a wrist, uh, wrist telephone, like a, a wristwatch. Well, of course, we have that and more nowadays. Uh, and it was, it was rather prophetic. So many of these things come true. Now, the other thing is that the capacity for controlling brains or rendering brains dysfunctionate is also becoming more and more a part of the military pursuit. The idea is you could use some um, chemicals in water or, or even spray them and people breathing them in would uh, incapacitate the brain, inter interfere with the um, brain signals and um, with the electrical flow in brain because the brain works on the basis of electrochemical mechanisms uh, and it's also a quantum system. But progress toward being able to use these kinds of weapons eventually of course is going to spill over into civil society. The idea that uh, you can incapacitate people's brains by interfering with electrical signals and chemical transmissions, that sort of thing in the brain. The idea that you can uh, read a great deal about what a person is thinking and what they're planning with brain scans. And it's go of course going to get to the point where smaller and smaller machinery are needed to do this and where it can be used perhaps will get into such a state of um, terror that we'll be using it for people boarding airplanes. Something like that eventually. I mean, who would have thought that we would be being irradiated with, with x-rays in order to board airplanes? Uh, who would have thought that the terrorists would have won so completely that we're so terrified that we actually do these things? But to be ignorant of these developments in neuroscience is really very dangerous for the citizenry. Because the governments will use them in ways that um, are incomprehensible to us at this point, and ways that can be very limiting to our freedoms and very damaging. Uh, people who start to protest in a lawful and, and necessary protest could also have their brain signals interfered with and uh, be incapacitated to, to act or think. Well, we wouldn't just use it on the Taliban, would we? Uh, eventually the government would use it on ordinary protesters who are exercising their democratic rights. I doubt uh, Mr. Putin would let something like that go by with the uh, 50,000 people who are protesting right now in Moscow. In any case, uh, we need to know more about these things and not become so hamstrung by our own uh, fears and ideologies that we don't take time to say, well yes, we do know these things. We do know the structures of the brains. We are able to prove and demonstrate uh, these things. And we talk about well, neuroplasticity, which is rather limited, you know. Neuroplasticity has no capacity to rewire brains. But being able to interfere with and change and alter the flow of uh, electrical systems in the brain, this could have quite a, a substantial um, capacity. And if we talk about uh, Antichrist and Apocalypse, you know, I'm very reticent to talk about that because uh, so far 100% of all of the prophecies and predictions about it have totally failed. And the failure rate has caused a lot of people to lose their, their faith and belief in Christianity altogether because some Christians are always prophesying some sort of rapture that will happen at a fixed and given time and it never happens. The end of the world is going to happen, but it never happens. Uh, the world will still be here in 2013, you can be sure. The uh, thing is, though, uh, we don't want to be apocalyptic in that sense about it and say, oh, well, this is going to be the mark of the beast, or that's going to be the mark of the beast. 
The fact that you can have a microchip implanted in your thumb that's totally undetectable, that you can, can be read as you go through an airport and gives you faster passage onto the airport, or that you can have implanted someplace and get through customs and immigration faster, or check out at the supermarket faster. All these things are already there. But these ability being developed in modern military neuroscience to control and manipulate brains, or to shut them down, this is very dangerous. And people need to be much more aware of it, that it's going on, that it has the capacity for enslaving nations, and uh, that it has capacity for enslaving everyone in the world, actually, ultimately. And governments will use these things, you can be sure of that. That uh, they will uh, uh, make use of them in ways that violate everyone's constitution and everyone's charter of rights. So I just wanted to pass this on and ask people to be a little more alert, a little more aware of it, and look into research. And for heaven's sakes, don't believe 80% of what you see on the internet. Because uh, a lot of it is there as a spoof, as a joke, tongue-in-cheek. Some of it's there just to cause confusion. And some of it's there from people who think they know something they don't know. So, you know, some serious-minded studies and things that are around on it. And eventually we'll give you some, some concrete references for those of you who are interested in it. But the increase in the surveillance of citizens by governments, the constant limiting and overriding of constitutions, bills of rights, charters of rights and freedoms, and all these other things. And now these capacities, when people have a, a, a reasonable democratic right to protest, and that kind of a reasonable democratic protest can be shut down, um, chemically or by electrical signals or something, and uh, these are things that are coming, and I suspect we'll be discussing some of this in Moscow at our conference uh, next week. But I um, just wanted to mention those things, and uh, don't um, take a negative view of neuroscience and neurobiology and what we've discovered in it just because it doesn't suit you ideologically, because to be ignorant of these things and not to know the capacity of them and the things that they do, can, and have discovered can be extremely dangerous to democracy, to the individual, to individual rights, and um, could, of course, be used in an apocalyptic way, could be used by Antichrist. I wouldn't speculate on that too much, but certainly the, the capacity is there to um, control and manipulate vast portions of the population all at once uh, through military neuroscience. I ask you all to think about it prayerfully and uh, give some consideration. And those who get hysterical every time neuroscience, neurobiology, or science doesn't happen to certify your uh, some kind of pet ideology you have, don't go there because you open yourself up to the danger of ignorance. And uh, think about it prayerfully. Pray about it a good bit. And thank you all, and God bless you.